What happens when you bring together two unconventional and experienced entrepreneurs that own competing agencies? They decide to challenge convention with creative collaboration. Join Veronica and Jillian to discover how two business owners that target the same audience created a podcast together. In each episode, they explore new ideas on how to collaborate, offer practical and actionable advice on expanding business, and have a transparent conversation about entrepreneurship. This is Creative Collaboration, Conversations with Veronica and Jillian. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode two of um, Creative Collaborations, Conversations with Veronica and Gillian. And I'm Veronica, and I'm here with my co-host, Gillian. Hello, and today we're going to talk about probably one of our favorite joint subjects, which is the power of networking. And I think that's the main thing that we have in common. <laughs> that's, that's why we're here, right? So... Uh, before we do, let's start off the way we always do in all of our episodes with our uh, fun fact. Um, so I don't know, why don't you go first? Any fun facts to share today? It's, um, I'm not sure if it's necessarily um, a fun fact, but I think it will be, will be good for everyone to know how we spend the, I think it was like half an hour before we actually start recording. <laughs> <laughs> And the questions that we are asking ourselves, and I do want to share this because um, it's real. And for everyone mm -hmm. that is considering actually doing a podcast or, or recording mm -hmm. or collaboration, mm -hmm. will, will be good because, hey, we are marketeers and we, we are mm -hmm. actually spending our days um, advising people on how to prepare for podcasts, recordings, videos. And I know I'm doing it and I know you're doing it. But you know what is very funny? It's the when we have to do it, we are actually the clients. Yes, <laughs> yes. the clients, and we go through the same things, even if we do know. And I find it so easy for to, to advise someone what to do. So actually, mm -hmm. the fact is that we spend half an hour wondering how should we how should we speak, how to present ourselves. Yeah. When yeah, uh, I think it's it's really funny because it reminds me. It's like. Um, yeah, it's like there's one thing about knowing how to do something, but then there's another thing about doing it, right? Exactly. And it's I, I find it to be, you know, so much easier to help somebody else with their business or to something that they're working on as opposed to when it's my turn. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. and then they have to like be like super focused. It's a different, different experience. So I think I appreciate you kind of pulling back the curtain and letting all of our millions of listeners and viewers know that we are like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're working on this on the fly. So cool. No, but it's um, why why I do want to bring this because the purpose of, of our conversations is to to have a real conversation, to be honest mm -hmm. and to, to bring you what is happening behind the curtain. And yeah. yeah, we are good at advising other people and it's way easier, but when you are doing it, different emotions come, come into place. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. insecurity, sometimes like, what's the best option? How's There are so many ways to do one thing, right? So mm -hmm. my point is just don't be afraid and go ahead and do it. And mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have fun mm -hmm. doing it. How about you, Julian? Mm -hmm. What's, what's your fun fact of the, of the... So mine is um, kind of out in left field from that but I'll kind of pull from the thread of the power of networking. And um, I will say for me, networking, the way I understand and kind of um, think about networking is really about building relationships. And so my fun fact um, is a little story about my first like best friend um, who was an an older man in my neighborhood I met when I was a kid. He was uh, never married, had no children, and lived in the same house his whole life, um, the house where his mother, father, and sister all died. So he was uh, uh, just this older man, and I befriended him, and he became like my grandfather of sorts. Um, and then he taught me how to drive a car uh, when I was seven. So I used to get home from school, get off the bus, and go over to... To Henry's house 
um, and visit with him and, you know, help do chores, rake leaves. And then eventually uh, I learned how to drive a car in a cemetery. Um, and years later, that's now where he's buried. So it was full circle. But um, by the time I was eight, we would uh, go drive to the bakery and things and run errands after school because he didn't have anybody else to drive him around in his vision and reflexes were getting a little bit slower. So um, for me, it's like that experience is, I don't know if it's a fun fact, it's a little strange, a little wild, a little unbelievable. Um, but it also is, was a very influential relationship in my life. Um, so I kind of hold that one near and dear. So that's my fun fact, abbreviated story of Henry. I'm getting goose, goosebumps listening to this yeah. story. And I have yeah. we need to is the, we need to change from the fun fact to to like um, something personal about us because mm. it's much more mm. appropriate. I, can't I know. Say it's so, fun. <laughs> I know. It's, I feel story. like I was thinking like, is that fun? Well, it's a little fun. Fun fact. I'm not sure. Maybe yeah, maybe the honest moment will be more more appropriate. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Well, there's my uh, attempt at a fun fact, which I guess. I don't know if that's the most fun fact I can but come up with. Maybe story. I'm not a fun person. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a beautiful story. And I love, I love, uh, wow, you were able to drive at seven? <laughs> yeah. Well, and seven was in the cemetery. So it's like very slow, right? Forwards. And then I learned how to back up. But the car didn't have power steering. It was an automatic, but it didn't have power steering. So I also, and then I had pillows. We He taught me how to <laughs> sew on those old Singer sewing machines. So I would yeah. rake up pine needles and we'd use the pine needles to make pillows. And then that's what I sat on and put behind me in the seat. And we would go driving at the cemetery forwards and backwards. And then eventually he would let me drive home and then drive in the neighborhood. And I just got better and more comfortable with it so that then we would, it just became like what I did by the time. Yeah. I was just driving him around. We just ran errands and it never really thought about it. It's like, at 13, I was driving on the freeway. It's, I should probably stop now, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that happened. Yeah. I'm curious. Did, did, no, never, ever the police stopped you too? They no. did, no, did nothing? No, no, you just <laughs> act as if. <laughs> I love yeah. that. Yeah. So anyhow, I'm not sure how that applies to business. If it does act as if maybe, um, but it is, I guess, yeah. like relationships and um, <laughs> Don't let anything stop little you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's all in service, relationships and service. And for me, it was a, a function of service, providing service to Henry because he needed somebody to bring him to the bakery or to go. And you never you know, know what you're learning. Yeah. Doing that, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, anyhow. Um, so, how's your week been? How's, how are things going? Have you um, had any new discoveries or? met anybody interesting or any any new stuff happening any ideas things tell me what's been going on I'm um I'm getting ready for my holiday actually so that's mm. exciting but um exhausting in the same time because as an entrepreneur before going on holiday you need to basically work beforehand <laughs> to, mm. have, to cover that period and also make sure when you're coming you're you'll not be overwhelmed with work and it was funny because I had a meeting before our recording with a, with a client and we were discussing about holidays and we were discussing as an entrepreneur what happens to you when you're going on holiday. And uh, we're actually going to launch a series of posts, social media posts on this. But the question that came up, and I'm very curious to hear from our listeners, if there are any, <laughs> is... <laughs> When you're going on a, on a holiday as an entrepreneur, are you actually going on a holiday? Are you able to stop your brain and be there with, like, I'm going to go and visit my family, uh, be there present, or are you still checking your emails? Are you still mm. taking things? Are you still working? Are you still following up on different projects, even if you have a team doing that? I'm, I'm very mm. curious because I realized I'm on holiday, but I actually have a meeting scheduled. Um <laughs> I, I said I'm going to double check a couple of things and I realized yeah. it will not be a proper holiday so I'm, I'm mm. thinking I need to go and actually move that meeting mm -hmm. <laughs> let's see worst case you know you have one or probably two meetings or you know do, do you, <laughs> how do you do it are you really on holiday when you're, you're on holiday I actually think this is an excellent topic that we should dig into in a future episode 
Um, Cause right away, I immediately think of the process. And so I think of what are people doing to prepare to go on holiday, right? So what is like the preparation, all the things like the tech and the tools you can use, how to prepare your team, clients, all of that stuff. And then there's being on holiday in the decisions to be made about, are you going to check emails? Are you going to check social? And where do you draw that line? And then there's the re-entry. So how to kind of strategically handle the re-entry. So I feel like we should add that to our list as a, as a follow-up. So. Yeah, and I'm when we're, you- Go ahead, when sorry. you listed all, all of that, actually, I do have a process and I have all of that in place. But ah, see, the problem is the mindset, actually. Yeah, that's a big part of it. So I think hold on to your your process because I want to I want to chat about that probably selfishly because I'm actually not going on holiday soon, but we're preparing now for December and we'll be away for three weeks, maybe four. I'm not sure how long. Um, so yeah so trying to work on that and uh, in a very different time zone and whatnot and deciding if we're going to work some while we're away because it's so long or not and try to how to think about being away for help you know for a, a long stretch so anyway um so maybe that's like a little a teaser like, yeah we can come back to that yeah write in the comments um or let us know send us a message would that be something of interest for for you our audience mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But Jillian, I know you're quite techie, more than me at some point. So did you discover a new tool this week or what happened? I did. I am excited. And it's a, it's a tool with a, an amazing person attached to it. So I went to a conference the other day, uh, a sustainability conference, and met this incredible dynamic woman uh, who blew my mind. And I absolutely don't say that often Uh, but what she has been able to build and then frankly seeing her like own the stage amidst amidst a sea of mostly the typical kind of older white men situation um, she rocked it and it's her company and the way they brought this event together and what she's been able to accomplish um, yeah she talked about she became a mom in 2016 and realized that she needed to do something and wanted to change the world, make it better for her child. Um, And so she got started. And that story resonated with me so much um, because I'm just four years behind her. My kid was born in 2020 and it was a giant wake up call, la la la. So without further ado, it's the Global Sustainable Enterprise System. Uh, It's a sustainability platform which she's integrated or she and her team, like incredible team have integrated um, like somewhere like 500 some odd um, different uh, languages in formats and all the stuff from all over the world to integrate it. So there's a unified language and measuring system for, for sustainability. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really, really amazing what she's been able to do largely through partnerships. Um, so anyway, so it's a GSES system. Mm. so incredible definitely, yeah. definitely i need to look into that and yeah. uh, actually we could talk about discoveries and what happened uh, it, yeah. that's be a different podcast because <laughs> sure i know <laughs> yeah uh-huh. but coming back to our today's topic actually it's um the power of networking and this is one mm-hmm. of the elements that brought us together uh, and actually this is how we reached out to each other because also according to our values building relationships instead of going and selling is what drives yeah. us this is how we yeah. conduct business and this is how we connect people and this is yeah. how we do everything basically yes so how did um, how did you learn how to network so for me um so i started my first business well let me say it like this um Years back, I caught an interview that Oprah Winfrey was doing back when she had her show with this guy named Robert Kiyosaki. And he was talking about business ownership and something about the way he was talking about it just like resonated with me. And it was as as if he was speaking directly to me. So I like walked over to the TV and like held the ears of the TV. And I was like, wow. And where, you know, I didn't know a lot of business owners at the time. Um, So it was like, just, it was like a light went on for me. 
And so that began my journey of wanting to start a business. Uh, and so I did a lot of different things, et cetera, et cetera. And within a year or two year, well, actually within a year, I had my first business. And so there I was like 20 years old or something, uh, realizing that you know, I didn't have a lot to offer in the way of like business acumen, like res any resources, really. I didn't have much to offer in the conventional sense. So what I would do is like, there's two things that I learned. Number one, being a younger female, I recognized that the way I portrayed myself, the way I carried myself, the way I dressed, everything else would influence the way I was treated and the way people saw me. So I was very particular about what I would wear and how I would dress, et cetera, um, and how I would stand, like my posture, all of those things. The second thing I did was this networking bit. But at the time, I didn't really know that's what it was. I just uh, realized that I could listen, actually, uh, listen to any events I was at, any, any environment, business environment, I would listen, like active listen, actively listen, active listening, whatever, and um, pay attention to what they were saying and begin to, I would remember it. And I would begin to say, like, I felt like everybody else knew everything and I knew nothing. So I had this like bias or this false idea of how, what everybody else had, like everybody else knew more than me. So eventually I started, I would ask, oh, do, you know, I'd hear somebody talking about some project or some idea and I would say, oh, do you know, you know, Roseanne, Roseanne is doing something. Do you know? And I began to realize that they didn't because I realized a very important lesson. I feel like one of the foundational pieces of networking, which is most people spend most of their time talking. Mm -hmm. um, most people are not present or aware or listening to other people, let alone actively listening. So like, you know, huge tip, just by actively listening, you automatically stand out. And I can almost guarantee you, people will like you just by actively listening because they will be able to feel that you're, you're present and you're, you'll, they'll feel that you're paying attention. And that's very uh, like luxuriating for people. So in any case, I did that. And by just starting to connect dots with people, my value began to increase. And next thing you know, I was becoming like, a hub of connections. And so I continued to do that and build more and more relationships. And so each, this is what influenced the way I see networking. For me, every relationship I built was like an asset, um, like a seed that I was planting, but I would, it was a hundred percent to nurture those seeds to see what would grow. So I could create introductions for other people. And so just make my network stronger and stronger and more collaborative. I never built a relationship or never like went to, you know, met somebody just to try to sell them. It was never, there was never a transactional piece because for me, even at, you know, 20 years old, 21, when I was starting this, my thought was, you know, if I'm going to spend time building a relationship. Like I care about the person. I don't want it to be just based on whatever thing widget I'm selling now. I want to have this relationship transcend any career situation. Um, so that was the attitude that I kind of operated with. In doing so, I ended up going from like zero network to hundreds and then thousands of relationships. And then, yeah, I feel like the punctuation on that is eventually the universe decided, okay, now it's time for you to start doing, you know, having this consulting agency. So that network started feeding me business. Um, you know, faster and faster. And so that's how I was able to grow my agency so quickly in the first 12 to 24 months. Um, and then the other piece I'll just throw in um, over those years as well. It's like every, I want to say every good thing that's ever happened to me. It's like every <laughs> single, every amazing thing, um, like the, all the opportunities I have had, whether it's, you know, traveling around the world and a lot of things or doing my TEDx talk or my first book, et cetera, those have all come to me as a direct result of relationships that have been built. Um, and none of those things were the, you know, objective of said relationships. They all were, it's like, what, um, what has uh, kind of bloomed from my my network and my relationships far exceeds what I ever could have imagined. So I'm grateful to like that. It just so happened back, you know, 
25 years ago, but he's <laughs> counting, um, that I just, I guess, intuitively or something decided to actually care about people and uh, to build, to, to network through the lens of building relationships because most of those relationships are still intact today. So that's my, yeah, that's how I see relationships and the power of networking, how it's been for me. Um, I, yeah, I do relate to this. I, I relate a lot because um, looking back, like what you just shared, the last part really impacted me because looking back, I have the same thing. The mm -hmm. the conference, the online networking with the spin that I'm creating. Um, I was part of Amsterdam American Business Club of the board and how I was doing things there was the same. Just I was listening to new, new people. Oh, you have in common, that in common with that person or mm -hmm. that person mm -hmm. more details about the specific topic and just introducing them. Um, but without an agenda. So it was purely... Yeah. And it, I think everything is switching. And this is what I'm implementing with the online networking with the spin. The idea is come here, be curious, don't come to sell. Yeah. And the yeah. beauty of it, once that you put this as, can I say it as a culture of the event or of, mm. Group mm. of the community, then everyone is, is, is um, taking it on board and is helping you implement it. So you don't need to be like a policeman going and saying, don't do that. Because actually... Yeah. Yeah. Everyone around, either they act, they, they will put you aside or tell you, no, that's not the way you do it. And you're changing mm -hmm. the type of conversations that you have. Mm -hmm. But it, mm -hmm. I, do, I do recognize that. And um, I don't know if in my case, so everybody knows, yeah. or if you don't know, I'm Romanian. So we do have a lot of Latin background in our culture and way where we act so for us it's very important to talk with people and to know like you always you have an issue oh i know that person that can help me or that person knows mm. that person that could introduce mm. me that's how mm. it kind of works so maybe it was in my blood because that mm. means you are okay so who do i know i have this issue who do i know that i can go and get information or can direct me or can yeah just learn more about the, that particular topic but that means you actually need you need to as you said pay attention have when you're discussing with someone mm. not to go with mm -hmm. a particular reason in mind but be yeah. curious and oh this is what you do interesting uh, this is what mm. i do mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. then you are, it's, it's like a different muscle in your in your brain is developing because instead of going with an agenda you are going and like I have no idea what will happen. <laughs> Let's see. Mm -hmm. It becomes mm -hmm. way better. What I also believe it's important when it comes to networking and building relationship is actually maintaining those relationships. Yeah. Because yeah. what's the point of having so many 1,000 connections if you don't really know them? So yeah. you're, not, you're not able to tap into them. And when I say mm -hmm. tapping into them, it's not that you go and ask for a favor. Like you said, you, you cut your mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I have a very similar situation because I had the big network back home. I had my business back home. Then I moved yeah. here and I turned 30 yeah. and I was like, what is happening now? I don't know. I knew one <laughs> person in the Netherlands. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I was like, the work culture is different. The environment yep. is different. I had the business in fashion. How do you get the business in fashion in a new country if you don't know the, the culture? And the, mm. let me tell you, especially in, in fashion, the culture in Romania to the one in the Netherlands is so different. <laughs> At least mm -hmm. moved 13 years ago was really different. So I felt very, very lost, honestly. So I said, I need mm. to start meeting people. How was the quickest way to meet people is get a job and you're going to have mm. a community, you're going to have an environment. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I used to work for a, for a media company. So I used to go network a lot because of my job and travel a lot because of my job. And that actually opened, uh, for me, was amazing because I met so many cultures and so many ways of working and networking. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even... When I was doing networking back home, actually, I wasn't sure that's proper networking because I don't think the term was so well used at that yeah. particular time, like yeah. mm -hmm. 30, 20 something years ago. <laughs> I'm starting mm -hmm. to know. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think some people are doing it more naturally than others. And I think it depends a little mm -hmm. bit on your personality. Um, 
so coming back here, starting knowing people the moment I decided to to leave the media company and I wasn't even sure what I want to do in terms of business. Mm-hmm. Just the fact that I sent an email to my former client saying, it was lovely working with you, let's keep in touch, mm-hmm. resulted in a lot of coffee meetings and phone calls. And honestly, my business was created and I had I started having clients before I was really opening my business business because of that because wow. they knew who I am they knew what I'm doing and it it was very organic and natural so a little bit like what you said your your first uh, 12 14 months of your business you grew quite a lot because of what you did is the same yeah but I think yep. the most important thing when it comes to networking and this is something that I really want to point out and to be strong is don't go there and say, I'm going to just network and be nice with this person so I can go later and, and ask yeah. for Because if you do that, it will never work. Mm. I'm, mm. I'm looking at base conference like Lana. Lana Yellen it was, yep. she's my partner uh, and she was one of the big supporters and behind it and everyone there that, that worked. All those connections were like, hey, I love what you're doing. Let's have a coffee and get to know each other. Honestly, mm. all of those meetings started like that. Mm. And it's really what we are doing here was like, hey, I like what you're doing. <laughs> let's be curious. Let's let's find out more. And I think if mm. you keep it, um, find that common bit of value, be it something in common or purely you just admire that person and you want to learn more. If you yeah. approach the networking in that way and you're, truly curious about that person and i love how you play you said it like get your ears open actively listen with yes. that purpose like just yeah. be curious and see what is happening with that person you have no idea what will happen and maybe it will right. not happen in one day or two days or five days it may happen in a couple of months or even years mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely never you never know so yeah, so as you're speaking, it's reminding me, I just read a great article on LinkedIn by Chris Brogan about uh, networking, and he kind of breaks it into three, like there are three buckets of people and how they approach networking. So I feel like we'll link that in the show notes. It's a really great article, very succinct and very relatable. Um, so I'll, I'm going to link that. Um, the other thing that reminds me, that reminds me of talking about this very thing and kind of how you're, you were saying about your it's like just in your culture and kind of your upbringing and just automatically think who do I know who do I know in our last episode you were talking about your first business I think um with the doing the gifts and such and I was like oh it reminds me of Ava so yeah yeah, yeah, I think you recently were able to connect with Ava I'm trying to make good on the introductions that I think for you as we're chatting so cool 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 and actually actually like it's very funny. Yesterday, I had a call with someone that I'm going to introduce you to <laughs> because I think you you guys could work very nicely together. But that's the power of it. Right. And actually, if we if we achieve anything with this podcast, is to open the minds of people. Like as you see, guys, mm-hmm. theoretically we are competitors, but we are introducing people to each other. <laughs> right. That's right. The whole point. Like if if you keep yeah. everything very narrow, you'll not be able to grow it. Oh, mm-hmm. it's, it's, I don't know, like think about money. If you just keep them under your mattress. Doesn't compound. There's no interest there. Exactly. And <laughs> yeah. they will lose, they will lose the value in long term. Yeah. If you mm-hmm. invest them and you mm-hmm. just do something with them, you'd never know. So, what so one quick question. I know we're like running out of time, but I'm just, I'm like super curious to know just because we have a similar approach and kind of mindset about how we approach relationships and we both have been growing our agencies for years. How do you like now are like, it's, it's not a perfect, it's not perfect math, but just to have an idea of like a hundred percent of the time, how much time are you spending nurturing relationships versus building new relationships? That's a hard question. Um, I know. I'm going to think of the answer for myself. I'm like, but I'm curious for you, honestly. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think because I never really, I would say it's, it's equally important. And the funny yeah. thing is the moment you are actually nurturing a relationship, that relationship will introduce you a new person. Yeah, right. So that's right. When done properly, that's true. Hmm. But you, it, it becomes very organic. 
So I would mm -hmm. say, um, I would say the same, uh, same amount of time. How so about what's, so I feel like it's similar, um, but just a quick call out for that. It's, um, it just came to me as we were chatting, like, huh, this is, and I'm just going to guess that you have experienced the same thing with your clients. I think there are a lot of people who think um, they, it's time to network when they're in the, a position of need. It's mm, like it's when everything is good. Yeah. When you're in a position of need and it's similar to a lot of companies, I think, oh, everything is good right now. We don't need to do a lot of marketing. And then all of a sudden it gets tight and like, ah, hurry up and market. And it's like, no, you mean hurry up and go sell. It's like not the time. So it's interesting. It's like, you know, yeah, anyway, there's like a little bit of a delineation there. And this probably goes back to Chris Brogan's article, but it's like to the idea is to get into a place of being proactive and not reactive and not to just go build a relationship when we need a job or when we need a client or when we need something, you know, and instead of that way and being more proactive and reaching out about other people, just to, to nurture the relationship, to say hello, to ask about somebody else's business, like those things. So I feel like it's encouraging to hear, and I'm not surprised that you also continue to spend a lot of time nurturing relationships and building relationships, just period. It's just like a standard operating procedure. And I think it's also important to, to mention something when you say nurturing relationship, don't think about possible prospects or things like that. For me, nurturing yeah. relationship is also with my collaborators, also with the mm. um, formal clients that I know they will never gonna work with me because they don't need me. Um, yeah. Or yeah. It doesn't, doesn't matter where they are, but you connect with people, forget about the business, connect with the person. If it's an interesting yeah. person and brings value to you by speaking with that person, I think that's the approach mm -hmm. you should have. Mm -hmm. uh, then, I oh, agree. that's a business I want to work with. Because you're changing the, the the set, but this is according to my values, and I do believe, as said, human at the center of everything, not the client, because mm -hmm. then you are creating something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So I feel like we could talk about this. I feel like I always say this because <laughs> everything we talk about, I'm like, but wait, but wait, but wait. I want to ask more and more. Um, but honestly, it's it's great to to hear you. Um, I appreciate being able to listen to you and how relationships kind of your value of relationships have continued through your life and through building your business um even years into building your business so uh great great chat great to hear you same here and um i do know we need to finish otherwise we can go hours and hours and uh, yeah. no one want to listen to us <laughs> but i'm curious maybe in in the comments and um how to how do the rest of our audience approach um and networking i'm actually maybe mm. we should do a panel and invite some people or do a live uh, a live streaming and get people in and, and discuss with them i think this could be very interesting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. understood like yeah i think so as well um but for now i think that's a wrap on episode two <laughs> so thank you all for listening and um I hope uh, you'll listen to the next one, the episode three. I can't believe it. I'm start, I will start losing count of them. <laughs> I know, look at us, multiple. So, all right, until next time. Cheers. Thank you for tuning in. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for joining us for today's episode of Creative Collaboration, Conversations with Veronica and Jillian. We sincerely hope you have gained at least one new idea or perspective that can be applied to your business. If you need a different perspective or want to meet fellow entrepreneurs, join online networking with a spin. All info can be found at spinideas.nl. If you own a business and are looking for tools, resources, and inspiration to achieve equitable and sustainable growth, visit thejilliangroup.com slash better. Until next time.